Yeah, thanks, Sabrina. There's some considerations relative to just the, the, the velocity of uh, action and transactions heading into the end of the year. Uh, from where we sit. Um, the good news is we have a lot of engagements in the new formations. And frankly, for the folks that we've been talking to throughout the year, uh, it gets to be sort of silly season at the end of the year uh, with these uh, domiciles that are very popular for these new clients. Um, so we suggest everyone try to start earlier, um, get the captive management engaged, get your business plans put together. Let's make sure the actuarials are um, uh, in the file and ready to go because ultimately um, the, the earlier you get in the queue, the better off you're going to be uh, from an execution perspective. Um, what we're also finding out, and, and this is a very pleasant surprise uh, from, our, from our client perspective, is that when they are now getting into a renewal cycle, um, they're generally far more engaged than they have been in the past. So they are you know, looking at the policies, they're looking at their businesses and the changes thereof, uh, they're inquiring as to whether or not they should be adding new product lines to their captives. Um, there's more robust discussion about, you know, the claims that have happened. And for, from where we sit, that's a very healthy thing uh, to have ownership more engaged, uh, to be more mindful about what uh, possibilities are down the road. Uh, and, and part and parcel to that, we would encourage the folks who may be tuning in who own a captive and they've had it for a while, um, to, to, to really challenge their managers about the utility of what they currently have set up. Um, very often we get asked to take a look at existing structures and we sometimes find that it's been built with sort of a narrow purpose. Um, maybe it's been built only for enterprise risks, but the business can support a much broader application of all the different and unique things that the captives can do for you. Um, so, one of the pieces of advice that I give folks is that they should really challenge the captive management to say, what else can we be doing to further maximize the utility of this and, 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 and round out my, my risk profile um, since I already own uh, a captive? Yeah, thanks, Max. And we've been, since we're getting towards the end of the year, we're actually having discussions with our clients that that are looking forward to the end of this year and the beginning of next year. And as I think about the, the policies that we're talking about, a lot of it is around, you know, fronted commercial general liability, specifically for contractors. And then there's some other industries, um, large deductible programs. As, as their premiums keep increasing, what we found is some of the carriers are willing to give really nice premium credits if the clients are willing to take a little bit of risk. So moving your, your deductible on your policy or your retention from $10,000 to $50,000 or two fifty. dollars I mean, if there's a certain period of time or certain amount you're willing to take where you, where you start trading dollars, where it makes sense for them to come in and take that deductible. Workers comp, Jared's mentioned health insurance before, but those are two, two places we're seeing a lot of activity and a lot of interest because these, it keeps coming. Um, the premium increases and it, and it probably will for a period of time. If you have a property portfolio in Florida, Puerto Rico, Texas, Colorado, you know, those, those premiums are going up. Now they have had claims, but now is the time to start looking at taking some sort of higher deductible on your policies and taking that deductible piece and putting it inside your own captive if it makes financial sense. Um, we're doing a couple right now where the clients uh, that are located in, let's say, coastal states are worried about ESG the environ, environmental, social, and governance piece of their business where they look at it and they say, you know what, if we need to just the manufacturing process that we use is not that environmentally friendly. So is there an EIL policy, an environmental impairment liability policy that can help in the event that we have a claim they will give us some money to change either our supply chain or our manufacturing process 
or maybe it's a complete product redesign. We're doing a few of those right now with the, with clients. And I think that's going to be a bigger and bigger piece going forward. Uh, one, one other thing that I would say that we're seeing the use of is the primary insurance policy, the primary insurance marketplace has gone up. It's become more expensive. We don't need to beat a dead horse, but there's the excess liability market. It's the first layer of your umbrella. And we're seeing a lot of clients that say, you know what, I want to put that first layer of, of excess liability or our, our umbrella inside of our own captive. And luckily we have a program that's becoming very, very popular. And we're getting a lot of interest in that because to the extent that they can lower the first layer of umbrella coverage, all of the other excess layers that are on top of that, it, it lowers the cost of those. So if you can bring down the cost of your primary layer, then that means all of the other subsequent layers in the marketplace become less premium. Yeah, I was going to add that, uh, you know, we, we obviously, you know, the considerations for 2022, we're, we're talking about clients, but, you know, something that I've seen over the last few years is, is the trusted advisor, you know, getting way more involved in, in bringing creative ideas to business owners. And, and those are the guys that I've seen that, uh, that have really grown a book. Uh, and retain significant, um, you know, client retention year over year because they are coming with new ideas. So you know, I just encourage the advisors out there, if you're not talking about captives or at least bringing the idea to the table, or as Wes just mentioned, the alternatives out there for the excess market, or as Jared's mentioned on other, other uh, webinars about medical stop loss, things like that. And if you're not bringing it to your client and someone else is, so I highly encourage get to them now, be the guy to bring the idea to the, to the uh, table. I think it's um, really going to add to your business moving forward and, and how they view you as a trusted advisor. Yeah. 